The funeral service of the uh, trade union veteran Emma Mashinini, which is currently underway in Pretoria, who was not only a unionist but was also a human and gender activist. She also dedicated, uh, she was also rather a dedicated servant of the people who spent most of her life fighting for the rights of women as workers and of poor people. Let's now take a look uh, at uh, Mama Emma eh, Mashinini's life and her contribution to the development of the workers' lives. I've always been a job beggar, you know. I, I know no rural life. Labour icon Emma Mashinini recalling her life. It was an early life of hardship for children like little Emma Mashinini and children born in the late 1920s. She experienced apartheid firsthand with her family constantly moving because of force removals. It was in Sophia Town where she felt most at home in those early years, giving her some of her fondest childhood memories. Dr. Koma, who lived the same street with my family, came from America. And he's the one who used to hold Sunday schools for the children. So just seeing them gathering, going into church was very fulfilling. And every child in the street, whether the parent is a church person, they admired and loved this and made sure that they're getting ready to go to church. At age of 14, she had left school to find work after her parents had separated. She was married by 17. Factory work led her to becoming a union organizer for the old Government Workers' Union which under her leadership would formalize a 40-hour work week and unemployment insurance for the workers. She would go on to help found the Commercial Catering Workers' Union, today known as Sakao, following its merger with unions in the retail, hotel and restaurant sectors. Union leaders and history acknowledge Mashinini's pioneering work with black organized labor. She's amongst those first three journalists that defied the odds and started the African unions at the time they were not necessarily recognized. You remember the only time that Africans beyond the burning of, of, of or the disappearing of, Sa of Satu and the previous other unions were no longer allowed until the strikes of 1972 and Mama Emma started Kausa then. She would show the next generation of activists that women had a place in activism. Well, during our time, women were regarded as the last in the queue for everything. Women were regarded as lesser mortals than men. And this is exactly what we were fighting for and against, that women are equal as men. So our battle was for the equality, that we must be treated very humanly because we are also human beings. <laughs> As a founding member of COSATU, Mashinini is credited with encouraging female representation, ensuring the new federation's logo features a woman with a baby. When one thinks of comrade Emma Mashinini, the images of the radical and militant traditions that were clearly visible during the OK Bazaar strike of 1987 come in mind which was but one of the many examples that actually proved that workers' place is in the struggle and that the woman's place is not in the bedroom and in the kitchen, but in the forefront of the struggle itself, in the factory battles, in community battles, and in other terrains of struggle in society. In 1981, she was detained tortured, and put in solitary confinement. Her autobiographical work, Strikes Have Followed Me All My Life, details her experiences in Pretoria Central Prison, followed by GP Police Station, 
then interrogation at John Foster Square. Incidentally, she was arrested with Neil Agate, who would not leave prison alive, becoming the first white activist to die in detention. In the 1990s, she was appointed the president of the Mediation and Conciliation Center in Johannesburg. After that, Mashinini became a commissioner for the restitution of land rights body, also the same capacity on the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. A silence for Emma Mashinini. The Order of Lutulin Bronze awarded to Emma Mashinini for her outstanding contribution in building the trade union movement her resilience under apartheid harassment and detention in the cause for a non-sexist, non-racial, just and democratic South Africa. For this work and her pioneering labor activism, she was honored with a national order. News of her death on Monday shocked many who have worked with her. She has played her role. She's old but we still get hurt when we lose them because she really played a role i know from the workers struggles from the churches our struggles we were with her in the protests uh, during those days and it's a great loss emma mashinini is a, a, a was a true icon of the working class um, many of us learned very deep lessons from her about organizing people uh, around the issues of people and not along personalities. She never disunited anybody. She always worked for unity. Um, and her first and most important uh, task, as she saw it, was to mobilize workers. And that's exactly what she did. And in particularly, women workers. And for that, we're grateful. As many sing her praises, Emma Mashinini is remembered for her selfless and lasting contribution to the labor movement and highlighting the plight of women. Struggle songs in her honor have yet to be sung, but they are almost certainly being composed.